Doug in the Iron. I'm part of Synergy Moon and also the CEO and co-founder of Interorbital Systems. We're somewhat unique and we're part of a Google Lunar X Prize team. We're also the launch provider for that team for Synergy Moon. And we're launching payloads for other Google Lunar X Prize contestants. It's a rendering of uh, our first satellite launch vehicle there launching from our private spaceport in Tonga. Founded the company in 1986. Uh, we have uh, both land and sea base operations. Our uh, lunar operations will likely take place from Tonga. If there are any difficulties, the open ocean is the answer. We have uh, complete production facilities in Mojave, and we've been operating there for, uh, again, since uh, doing rocket engines since 1995. Uh, both cryogenic and sorbal propellants, which is what we use currently. Uh, many sounding rocket launches and uh, side projects like Dicker Tans around the world that live in Hilton. We constructed all those uh, propane tanks and uh, propellant delivery systems. Uh, we have unique, uh, a unique approach to our, our rocket designs. We have a totally <coughs> modular system which can be uh, upgraded to any mission requirement by adding additional common propulsion modules. We have um, moved to completely storable propellants, white fuming nitric acid, and uh, turpentine, or purple alcohol, so it's basically uh, green uh, propellants that are derived from pine trees and uh, Quaker oats hulls. Uh, we um, use a radically simplified uh, systems approach. We don't use turbo pumps. We don't need an ignition system because these are hypergolic propellants. Uh, it's, it's basically a stripped down Spartan system that is the lowest cost uh, rocket launch system in the world. Uh, we operate again at the Mojave Spaceport and we're getting ready to do uh, our flight tests of one of the single common propulsion modules. Uh, these are, again, the essence of simplicity. They can be bundled into these uh, various vehicles. Our first satellite launch vehicle is the um, Neptune 30, 30 kilograms to low Earth orbit. And uh, that we're using in the NanoSat challenge uh, coming up. And we're car car currently carrying four uh, Google Lunar X Prize payloads. I have a list at the end which we'll take a look at. And uh, it sounds like after the talks last night there'll be, there'll be many more. Uh, we have uh, a variety of uses for these vehicles. Uh, one interesting one that just came up is Olaf Zipser is going to do a high altitude uh, jump attempt uh, to uh, break uh, Kittinger's record using a single module of um, the single CPM. Uh, and that should happen sometime at the end of uh, this year, uh, 2012 actually. Uh, the rocket of interest uh, for this group would be the, um, the N1000 or 1000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. Uh, we um, bundle approximately uh, approximately 33 of our common propulsion modules into that uh, into that vehicle. Uh, we're looking at uh, landing in a lunar direct fashion, uh, 60 kilograms on the lunar surface. It's a four-stage vehicle. And we're also going to be using that for uh, space tourism, with the first flight being a two-person capsule uh, doing an eight-orbit uh, mission. Uh, the uh, N30 and the N45, which are variants, satellite launchers uh, carry uh, they're really dedicated small satellite uh, vehicles, which is uh, rare in the world today. And uh, also of interest uh, for people here, uh, uh, we are opening up a number of payload spaces on a, on a second flight. We've sold out our first flight. We have two suborbital flights coming up for our own uh, testing, but we have payloads on those as well. One guided and one uh, unguided, the initial unguided, the second guided. Those will take place north of the Mojave Spaceport. And uh, this is the vehicle that will be launched. This is the uh, flight test vehicle, uh, CPMTV, and our mobile launcher, which we also constructed here in Mojave. But again, imagine five of these bundled. That becomes the first satellite launcher at the M30. Uh, again, uh, we're offering uh, a special academic price uh, for Google Lunar X Prize entrance. And, uh, again, across the academic world as well. Uh, it would be probably five times higher if you were a commercial entity. 
but we also make these satellite kits, uh, CubeSat personal satellite kits, and we've just introduced our CubeSat kits. So we give you a, a satellite kit and a launch uh, for $8,000. Don't think you can find that anywhere else in the world. This is our current uh, launch manifest for uh, the launch. We're looking at very likely March of, of 2012, realistically. Huge, uh, there are huge uh, regulatory issues that have come up for uh, getting a launch license. It used to be relatively easy. We had one of the first in, in the year 2000. But we're estimating that workload, plus uh, all the flight tests and things that need to be accomplished. Uh, 2012, March, is a, is a realistic uh, first launch date. As you can see, we have uh, uh, our team, Synergy Moon, uh, Wes Failer from uh, Fluid and Reason, coupled with part-time scientists, uh, and uh, Euroluna with their, their double CubeSat, and the number of other groups who are going to be launching with us uh, who are also uh, entrants at the, uh, in the XPRIZE. So it's a really exciting mix. We have military, we have arts, music, uh, uh, really a wild uh, international combination from uh, Vietnam, Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, all the way down through advertising agencies from San Francisco. So uh, everything you can think of. And uh, many more who are signing on. Basically it's, uh, it's the orbital enabler. Thank you. Questions? The fuel tanks are made of aluminium, but yeah. yes. uh, at what pressure they are working if it's not confidential? It's a little confidential, but they're not a high pressure system, it's a blow down uh, pressure system that we're using basically to uh, oh, 20 bar. Not, a, not, a, not a separate system, yeah. very, very, very simplified. Any more questions?